Hi everyone, it's MJ and we're looking at question 5 of the September 2017 paper. And we're dealing with confidence intervals as well as with hypothesis testing. So let's get stuck into the question. It says, in an election between two candidates A and B in a large district, a sample poll of 100 voters chosen at random indicates that 55% were in favor of candidate A. And the question is, calculate a 95% confidence interval for the proportion of all voters in favor of candidate A based on the above sample. Now, this is quite an easy question, and why it's easy is because of the words that they're using. They're telling us we need to calculate the proportion. We've been given a percentage, and we've been given the sample size. So we have N and we have P, and it's between two candidates, A and B. So in a sense, we are looking at a binomial distribution, which means binomial distribution, if you've learned your formulas or if you're allowed to bring your formulas into your exam, you have the following as your confidence interval. We're getting 1.96, that's coming from the 95% part over there, and the structure is as follows. We've got p hat, 1 minus p hat, divided by n. And now all we're simply going to be doing is putting in the values, which is 0 0.55 plus minus 1.96, and we have 0 0.55 times 0 0.45 divided by 100, and we want to plus that, we want to minus that, so we're going to have our confidence interval of 0 0.4525 and 0 0.6475. Okay, cool. And then this is part one, and that is the answer. The tricky part is, or, or where people might have struggled, is if they didn't realize that it was binomial. I think figuring out that it's binomial is the hard part, but the clue, and this is what you need to look out for in exams, if they're using the word proportion, or if they're only giving you the P and the N, it makes a lot of sense to use binomial. So that is maybe the tricky part of it, but the actual maths is very straightforward. Okay, let's go on to question, well, the second part of the question. A candidate is elected if they win more than 50% of the votes. We want to test in which the alternative hypothesis is that support for candidate A is such that she will win the election. Okay, so now they're telling us what the alternative hypothesis is. Write down the hypothesis for this test in terms of a suitable parameter. So what we need to do here is we need to write the null and alternative hypothesis. And what we're doing here is that the P is the proportion. So this proportion here is linked to this 50%. So what we can have, we're going to have HO as our null hypothesis versus H1, which is our alternative. And we've been told that the alternative is P greater than 0 0.5 because that is them winning the election such that she will win. And that means that the null hypothesis is that P is going to be less than or equal to 0 0.5. I mean, theoretically, you could put H like as equal to 0 0.5, but it's nicer to do it as this way because you're saying the null hypothesis is that she doesn't win, the alternative hypothesis is that she does win. So that should have been quite straightforward, a nice easy mark. This question here, I think a few of you might have struggled with. It says, explain whether or not the confidence interval in part one can be used to test the hypothesis in part two at the 5% level of significance. That is the big clue. So while it is true that we can use confidence intervals to test our hypothesis or our hypotheses, um, we cannot use this one in part one. And the reason why we can't use part one is because we were using a two-sided test. So we were using a two-sided test at 5%, which means plus and minus we were having 2.5 and 2.5 
on either side, which means we can't use it because it is a two-sided test, which means the one-sided would only be 2.5%, and that is half the level of significance that we are looking for. But like I said, it was a bit of a difficult question because you kind of need to really appreciate the theory and the whole idea behind hypothesis testing and confidence intervals. And that's one thing I must stress is statistics is not just a mathematical exam. It is an exam that does require a little bit of deeper thought. And you need to understand why you do things rather than just how to do things. Anyway, Let's move on to the last part of the question, which says it has been reported in the news that a new poll estimates support for candidate A at 52%, with a margin of error of no more than plus minus 2%, with confidence 95. Determine the minimum size, minimum size, and what I like about the word minimum is that Remember, size has to be a whole number, which means we're going to be rounding up because we need to have the minimum of the sample of voters that was taken in this new poll. So what we're going to be, uh, so this is part two. Let's look here at part three. So in part three, what we have is the following equation. We have something with our 1.96, you know, our p hat, 1 minus p hat over our n, and we want this to be equal to 0 0.02. Okay, if you're wondering where am I getting that, remember over here, this chunk, this part over here is the width that we're adding to our confidence interval. So we just want to look at the width of our confidence interval. So that's where we're getting this here. It's just the width. And we've told that the width is equal to uh, 2%. Now we have the P, and that is 52. So we simply need to plug these in, and our unknown is the N. So we have 1.96. We're getting that from the 5% confidence. So 0 0.52, 0 0.48. Our n is the unknown, which is equal to 0 0.2, which means we want to get n on its own. So it's going to be something like this. Um, dividing it on these sides, 0 0.02 divided by 1.96 squared, because we need to get rid of that square root. And we see n is going to be equal to 2397.16. And like I said, it's a sample size. We can't leave it like that. It needs to be a whole number because remember, this number represents people and you don't get 0.16 of a person, which means our sample size should be 2398. So 2,398 people is going to be the minimum sample size we need in order to fulfill this criteria. And yeah, there, there we're done. It's, it's quite interesting that this question was only worth six marks. Normally these types of, uh, or this part of the, the course does count for a lot more marks. So make sure you are paying a lot of attention to this course. Anyway, I'll see you guys for the other videos. And as always, if you've got any questions, please let me know in the comment section. Cheers.